Paul, let's move over to Rangers. Do you think they should cash in on James Tavernier this January? There was obviously interest for him from Turkey uh, in the summer. A couple of clubs kind of came calling, and Tavernier's form obviously very much has dropped since that summer transfer window with the form of Rangers generally on the football pitch. Is it time for them to cash in on their captain? No, absolutely not. I mean, he's, he's a top quality player and he's the most influential player they've got. Yes, he's having a dip in form. The manager's taking him out the side. There's nothing wrong with that. Just because you don't play well for 5, 10, 15 games, whatever it is, you don't just sell a player on the back of that. You look at 24 goals and 12 assists last season. That's from a right back, from a right wing back. 24 goals and 12 assists. That's at the end of the last season. So, yes, he's having a dip in form, but so are Rangers. I mean, he's contracted till May 2026. And at the moment, you need players like that around the dressing room. You need your characters and you need your leaders. Yes, he's not playing well. I can understand the unrest from the Rangers fans with his performance, etc. But actually, you give him an opportunity. You don't drop one of your best players from a great height at the first given opportunity. He's not playing well. The team's not playing well. Look at his stats. Look at his performance levels the last season, the season before. He's a player that when he's playing well, you need to get him back to his best. And that's up to the manager to do that. So in answer to your question, no, absolutely not. And what would it cost to replace him? That's the question Rangers have to ask themselves. How do you replace Tavernier, the goals and assists that he provides for the team and the experience? Um, it's going to cost you a lot of money and we know Rangers don't have a lot of money right now to do that. So it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to be thinking of selling Tavernier. The only reason you'd be doing it is he's coming to the end of his contract in 2026 and he is 33 now, but I still think he's got a big role to play at Ibrox. Yeah, and Pete, you talk about replacing those goals and, and where to spend it. Rangers looking at Kwame Poku, who's had a really great start to the season. Also looking at Arif Ayman Hanapi. Do you think Rangers should do similarly to the way Celtic have been doing and really attack that Asian market for players who may not cost quite as much as, as you know, going to you know, League One in, in England or the Championship in England to try and bring in uh, some top talents? Yeah, you've got to be scouting everywhere. All these top clubs nowadays have got scouts employed across the world but obviously we know about the data and the analytics that you can get now to to cover all leagues across the world obviously Celtic have had success uh, shopping in the Asian market um, Rangers being linked with this Malaysian winger Arif Hanapi I can't uh, say I know too much about him um, be a massive gamble I think if Rangers were to sell it, to sign him he hasn't really played at a, at a high level if he's playing for a team in a local Malaysian league but Poku, for me, he looks a real good player at Peterborough. Um, twenty, he's a twenty-three years old, top goal scorer in League One right now. I think he could be a real smart signing from somebody uh, either in January or in the summer. He's coming to the end of his contract at Peterborough as well. Um, so basically, if he moved across or sorry, up to Scotland, uh, you could probably get him for minimal compensation because of the cross-border rules as well. So I think Rangers. I think that will be a smart piece of business for the word to follow up their interest in Paku. Um, they can obviously talk to him in January as he can talk to a foreign club, but I think there's a number of clubs who are interested in Paku because of his form this season. Um, 10 goals and 5 assists in 15 matches. There's a number of championship clubs ready to sign him in January, and I think Peterborough themselves would prefer to sell him in January if they had to because they don't want to see him walk out of the club for nothing. But yeah, he he could be a real smart signing. I think he's got a player with huge potential and he's obviously shown it in the EFL this season. And, and Paul, we hate to talk about Clement every single week, but it feels like we absolutely have to. Kevin Muscat and Frank Lampard are the two names most recently been thrown in the mix of the entire carousel of people that have been thrown in the mix for the potential Rangers job that's opening up. What do you think of those? I know previously you had mentioned you'd like the idea of a Michael Carrick or an Andrea Pirlo, somebody who has experience in midfields, feels like a similar kind of uh, hiring to Steve Gerrard a few years ago. Does Frank Lampard kind of fit that bill for you? Yes, yeah, similar. Um, Stephen's been relieved of his duties in Saudi Arabia as well, hasn't he? So uh, Etifak. So those, those rumours are not going to go away, those links to go for, for Stephen to go back, um, if that's the case. Graham Potter, Gerrard, Benitez... Those types of names. Muscat, not so sure. Managed Melbourne Victory, managed in Japan and China successfully. Um, not so sure that's a, that's a good fit. I, I've, I've said this before, the, the size and the global appeal of both Rangers and Celtic, you're telling me they can't attract a top-class manager. Wages, salary, the financial package might not be there, but the opportunity to manage such a huge club um, will, will, will attract some big names. Muscat and Lampard. Lampard in a similar vein to Gerard. Yeah, I can see that. Gerard returning. I, I could actually see that. They say never to return. But actually the job that he did there, I, I could potentially see that. But I, I don't think the, you rule out a really big name going, going back to Rangers. I don't. Philip Clement, he's 
seems every game we're talking about his last game. Um, he's 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 dangling by a thread, uh, but he's listen. He's he's still there. So it's it's you shouldn't really talk about managing his job, and we don't like doing it. But it's it's almost like the inevitable that wh who is going to be the next Rangers manager.